Hey there, I'm Daniel. Welcome to Bandit's Keep. And we're going to continue, actually we're hopefully going to finish in this session, uh, the first level, the main part of the first level, which is the tricks and traps of our mega dungeon. So um, we've got a couple of side areas that I'm going to work on in the next couple of videos or in some future videos, which are the uh, humanoid area, which is going to be kind of a cavernous area, and then also an area that's been shut off for a long, long time uh, by an infestation of giant and regular probably. Uh, spiders, which we'll do as kind of a kind of a general dungeon. Those will come up in the future episodes. We should go with that. Um, but for now, I just want to finish. This. I started. What happened was I actually started working on the spider thing, and then I realized that I've left this kind of half done. And hopefully, by the time you are watching this, I will actually have translated this into a map that's usable and neaten this up in a PDF format, and I will put it available. Uh, I'll somehow put a link. If you look in the description, it'll be there. I'm not sure. Probably on Google Docs. Um, in any case, if it's not there, <laughs> uh, or I'll pin a comment. If it's not there, then uh, it will be shortly because uh, hopefully with today's video, and I made a bold thing before I finished, um, we'll have this first, at least the first part of it done. I want you guys to start being able to use it and kind of mess with it and stuff and see how it works out. So without further ado, uh, let's get to it. So if we remember from the past... This is what we've got so far. Essentially, we're looking at. Huh, my pencil here. I'm gonna point at it, right? Whoop. Yep, that's that part. Okay, so we've got um, this area right down here. We is just past a, a, a pet trap that we put down there, which actually has a secret entrance to level two, uh, but we never went past that. So, I think that's for the most part. I need to see that. Uh, for the most part, that's all. Well, actually, let's look at a drama. So it's this, right? Right there, we have a, a corridor with nothing. Also, from our initial uh, drawing, we have this area, which is a room that I put nothing in, and there's some doors in there if we wanted to mess with that. Everything else, though, like, for instance, this area here and this area here, which are basically uh, all of this is area 9, I think that's totally fine. I'm not going to put anything else in that area because I feel like Again, part of this is, remember we have that random chart. The longer they explore, the more likely they are to run into things. So we want to give them empty rooms and areas to explore. That's going to be left to the DM to flavor those up. Maybe what we'll do is, once I put this out there, if people want to do little write-ups of descriptions for those rooms and send them in, and we'll, well, I'll put those in there and credit you or whatever. We'll, you know, we'll do stuff like that. So in any case, so let's just do this. So I'm um, sorry, I'm... I gotta figure out a way to put that over here, I guess. But I'm always looking over here because this is my iPad. Just get, I did get a question about that. I just have my iPad set up as an extra screen, essentially, in OBS. And I'm using basically a chroma key, a green screen. That's the reason why you can see through it. Oh. Anyways, tech stuff to the side. Let's go here. I'm gonna get rid of that level. So I want to put it back on this layer. I'm using Procreate, which is kind of a drawing program uh, for the iPad. I'm sure it's for other tablets and stuff too. I'm not sure though. Um, and I like to use this for this kind of stuff, well, partially because I can show it to you guys, but also because I can do it on layers like this, so we can actually have, like, if you remember from the last time, I have, you'll be able to see it very well, but I have this layer here, which is my, um, that maze layer that's, um, that's essentially the, the, the fog, and then I have, you know, this right above, so I can actually kind of leave them in the same document on top in layers. I guess you could do that in Photoshop as well. Okay, enough technical stuff. Let's do this. I think I'll leave it black like this, and I'll put myself small in the corner, because we don't really need that corner down there that where I am and where I'm blocking it. You don't really need that right this second. All right, so the first thing I want to do is actually, hmm, actually, I want to deal with this room right here first. I saw something really, really fun. Um, I guess i got to get rid of this to do that. I'll leave the green screen on. I saw something really fun on Don John, I believe it was. Yeah, I was, uh, actually, I saw this, which is what made me want to start to work on the spiders, a crystal spider statue, I probably should copy that, but um, I thought this was neat. Summoning circle, brimstone smell, dead wizard. You know, <laughs> I mean, all the stuff on this page, almost all of this is great. I don't know if I'd use the giant's belly button, but, you know, at least in this dungeon, but I definitely could see using a lot of it. Well, which, sell which selling secrets for names of children? I feel like that'd be a good wandering monster. But anyways, this summoning circle I thought was really interesting because what we could do is put that circle in this room here. Come on, right layer, I am. 
So we put the circle in here. And then what we do is we make this, so this is actually be for our purposes. Let me copy this. Let's go back to my document here. Don't worry, I will not keep this to you in a text document. I'll actually make it. I guess I'm going to make this even though it's kind of a weird order. I may end up reordering these numbers. Maybe not. I'm going to make this area 13 because that's where we're at. Um, <clears throat> what I think could be fun to do here is basically, yeah, you guys can see that I'm probably blocking with the, with the iPad on me. Let me hide that layer for a second. Uh, what we're going to do here is summoning circle, brimstone, smell, dead wizard. Okay, right? That's all fine. Um, roll. Ah, let's say two, two d four. To determine how many. Actually, no. Even better. Roll the first time the party enters this room. Roll 1d6 and 1d4. This is how many d6 days, no, no, hours, days, weeks, months, d4. This body has been here. Keep track of the decomposition of the body from that point on. Yeah, I have different people run it, different things will happen. You might find this basically the more mostly a skeletal uh, body. You might find a freshly burnt body. Days or probably weeks even still. It will, days for certainly it will definitely be stinky. So you can actually use that as part of your kind of flavoring for it. Um, and again, to tie things into the uh, <clears throat> into the rest of the dungeon, um, if the skulls in room 11 are consulted, they will know this wizard is not from any of the neighboring countries and used a uh, portal unsuccessfully, obviously. To travel here okay a little flavor doesn't really do much um, we could add some treasure onto the wizard if we want to entice players I mean I will note that it is very 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 close to the entrance so you know whether or not you want to put treasure on this wizard um, comes down to how long he's been there hmm. actually I guess that makes sense okay If the wizard has been there only hours, comma, roll a d6 if it is equal or less than that number, the wizard will have treasure. Yeah, why not? Give a very, very small chance of the treasure. So if the wizard's been there for an hour, um, oh no, I should do that backwards. If, if it is, uh, right, because you want a higher number. If it's equal or more than that number. So if they're only been in an hour, there should be a, that number, right? 
Right, because if the wizard has been there only an hour, there should be a very good chance it's off treasure. Yeah, there we go. Otherwise, they have been looted. The wizard has... Uh, I mean, it's very unlikely that, it, that he's be only like a medium, right? Because uh, actually, there is a way to calculate treasure for NPC parties. We'll have to look into that. Um, let's let's if this we have, if we have time, I'll do it live. Um, you yeah, know, why not? I'll do it. I was just, I'm just in a, sometimes you're in the mo the moment, you know, and you want to keep doing. I think OSC oh, might have it. Let's see. I mean, it should because BX does. I just have no idea where it would be. It'd be like under NPC treasure, basically. Um, treasures, placing treasure, no, nah, it's not going to be here. Basically, there's a section about, N oh, here we go, NBC Encounters, Adventuring Parties. There we go. Uh, basic Adventurers. Composition C below. Oh, types U plus V shared among the group. There we go. Uh, is that it, though? This There's no... Okay, so U plus V. So let's go to... Um, let's go here. Uh, all right, so I'm going to look up... Uh, treasure type U plus V... Oh, actually, I put you on the ah, put you on the wrong one. Uh, I want that. You were on the wrong one. Oh, I was just trying to get rid of this. So many flip, flip, so many switches to flip. Okay, so here I am at the. Um, oh, I can also do it this way. We did this before. Remember, we just did an adventuring party, uh, but I think I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to go treasure type by type. U plus V is what we're looking for. So we're going basic. This is a first level adventure. Uh, it could be zero as well. So U nothing and V nothing. He's got nothing. You know, I want to give him something. Let's roll. There we go. Oh, wow. Okay. He's, he's doing pretty good there. So if they get lucky, that's the treasure he's got. I mean, that's a heck of a lot of treasure for, for you know, I'm just going to do, what, what, does a, what does a medium have? I'm just going to cut it down because this isn't it for a full adventuring party. I'm just going to give him the 11 gold pieces. I don't want him to have nothing because I feel like that's kind of lame, but... Um, uh, Sometimes when you're doing this, you have to, um, you know, you want to use your random charts because maybe that's kind of so you don't feel like you're being too uh, too much in control. You know, and sometimes you want to lose, 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 leave the control. You don't want to feel too forced. Like, I only want to give them this. Like, you know, I like the randomness of it. But then sometimes as you're doing that, you're like, no, no. Dude, okay. He's, he's a traveling wizard. He's going to have some gold on him. So I'm going to say he has uh, uh, the 11 gold pieces. But remember, he's burnt up because, uh, you know, he got burnt up anything. He's going to have 11 gold pieces, um, and he's going to have um, a dagger. He'll have, he'll have uh, a backpack with, we'll say, six iron spikes. And again, these things aren't necessarily treasure for experience points, but they're something that could be useful. So we'll just give him that. That that feels fine. So that's area, that's going to be area thirteen. So let's go back to our map. Move my pencil. So I'm going to put. I'm just going to do it like this, so I can. Oop. I can draw in there easier. So that's area thirteen, and now uh, maybe I'll do it that way. I'll write it inside. I'll just make this really big. I'll be honest. Yep. <laughs> Writing with this iPad like this is not the easiest thing. There we go. I guess I have to write really giant. Oh, look, I need that. It's okay. So what you will notice here, though, is that there are two doors. Um, so let's see. These are 10-foot squares. Let's put another room here. Put a 20-foot square room here. 
And let's put a little bit of a... Remember I said before, I want to leave space here, right? So I don't want this to be um, one of those situations where every inch of this thing is filled in. Because we might want to add something later. But what I think I'm going to do, just for the heck of it, is put... Actually, I'll do this. I'm going to put a passageway here. And I'm going to put a secret door. You know, why not? So, again, we're early in the dungeon. This will actually, it's not going to give them that much of a, a, a movement uh, advantage here. But it kind of teaches the party that there'll be, there'll, be, um, there'll be secret doors and stuff. Now in this room, I'm just going to fill in here so I know that's an empty space. In this room here, let's put something from our random list. Remember we had a random list? Uh... Scroll down, find my mouse here, there we go. And we had this thing, it's uh, the, down here. It's 100 random, 100 list. Let's go over here, I have the crawler open. We'll do a D100 roll, which is this guy right there. Ooh. Uh, 59. Poison gas trap. Oh, that sucks. So it says poison gas trap onset 2d4 rounds save or 30 damage. So clearly this is that's gonna kill any personal character, so it's save or die. So this is gonna be room 14. And if we're gonna have a poison gas trap in here, uh, we can do several things. Oh, interesting. You know what? What might be useful, what might be good for us here. I like the onset part. Um, come back and look at this. Maybe the poison gas trap should be in the room with the wizard, right? He didn't die because he screwed up his teleport. He died because he teleported into a room with the poison gas trap. So, okay. Let's do a little switch to just watch it here. I'm going to come up here and we're going to make this room 13. Okay. We may still put something in that room, so I'll leave it for now. So let's go back here now. Let's rearrange this. Summon a circle, brimstone, brimstone, smell, dead wizard. When the door is opened, the party is hit by any number of smells. There is a poison gas trap in the room that has been set off by an unknowing wizard who has teleported directly <laughs> he's got bad luck right onto the flagstone that set the trap off, period. Okay. Boom, okay, now we know, okay. The poison, gas, smells very sweet. And if the body is fresh, the PCs should I okay. poison gas? No, I'm not gonna do that because that's they're gonna come in if it smells sweet. Poison gas. The smell of okay. Here we go. The smell of the poison gas will burn the nostrils of the PC. 
PCs. However, if the body is badly decomposed, do not alert the PCs. Mm, if badly decomposed, they may mistake the smell for for the rotten magic user. Keep calling him a wizard. Oh, because that's what that thing's like, magic user. We're going to say wizard because... We're going to say magic user because... Okay. A uh, summon circle brimstone smell dead magic user. That's why I was thinking shovel out treasure because I was thinking wizard, which would be... Um, would be a high level magic user. But we're going to say he's... Okay, when the door is open, uh, the part is hit by any number of smells. There's a poison gas trap in the room that is set off by an unknown wizard who is teleported directly into the flagstone and set the trap off. The first time the party entered the room, roll to see how long the the way was wizard's been there, basically. Um, keep track of the decomposition. All right, the smell of the poison gas will burn the nostrils of the PCs uh, unless the smell of the decomposing body is greater. We'll say it that way. That's the easy way to say it, right? Um, anyone remaining in the room for more than, we'll say four rounds. So basically, they're going to search. They're going to be in there for more than four rounds. Rounds will need to make a save versus the weakened poison add uh, plus, let's say plus four to the roll. So it's a weak poison spell. Uh, or die. If the room is aired out for a day, it will be safe to enter. Okay, so now I've just really ramped this up, right? Assuming that now we're looking at a trapped room with uh, the potential for death, right? From the from the from the thing. Now I'm going to go back and go do what we did before with this, right? I'm going to go back to um, to the basic book, and I'm going to go to my empty room stocking oh, of the dungeon. I think that um, where's that? Is that right here? I think that now that warrants that, right? I remember that it's automatic. I think one to six hundred uh, silver, and there's a chance for here it is. We're on the first level of the dungeon. We're looking at. 1d6 times 100, so I'm just going to... What's great about this crawler app is I'm just going to hit this thing once and I should be basically good to go. Uh, all right, so roll. So 1d6 times 100, so our d6 is down here. So 200 uh, silver. There's a 50% chance of gold. I rolled 100, so there's no gold. 5%, okay, no. And I'm going to do two more percentiles for gems and jewelry. No, no, and then magic item. Okay, so in fact, he has less less treasure than, than, I, than I even gave him. So I'll leave it the way it was. I'm going to leave this the same, though, because maybe somebody still would have looted him. And this is all true as well. So none of that has to change. What that means now is that this first room is empty. And I don't know that that's not necessarily a bad thing. 
you know, let's roll one more time on our D100 thing. And if we get something we like, then I will, um, I'll use it. See if we can spike a little imagination here. Um, otherwise, I think we're going to leave that room empty. 84. A female dwarf vampire conducting necromantic experience, experiments. Her lair is a chamber of horrific madness filled with withered corpses dressed like dolls. Oof. Now, that's really interesting but not in what is very likely the very first room that they walk into in the dungeon. I think we want to keep this first room. Actually, with this being said, we really want to set the tone of the dungeon in this first room, so what we should actually do is put a trap in here. A trap that's been set off. Oh, which we already did in, in room 13. So to be honest, we're actually golden. I think this is perfect. We're going to leave that empty, and we'll leave the other thing to a secret. Again, we're teaching them that there should be, they should be on the lookout for secret doors. Okay? Because we know that... Um, okay. So we're teaching them they should be on the lookout for secret doors because right away we're giving them a super obvious secret door. You know, if they come in the dungeon down these stairs... Oops. If they come in the dungeon down these stairs and they go right for this door, and if they check this door, they're going to see, oh, a trap. If they check this door, they're going to see a secret door. So right away, we're setting the the uh, the mood, right? We're setting the mood right away that there's traps and there's going to be secret doors, and they should pay attention. And I think that's probably a, a smart way to do it for us here. So now let me go back to this layer. Let's turn that one off again. I'll go back to red again. Okay, so the other area that we want to look at is now we know that eight down here in the corner. One minute, big. That we know that eight down here in the corner is. Um, ah, just drew it with my finger. You forget it doesn't show the whole screen. We know that eight down here in the corner is um, going to lead to the the the, the to humanoids. So. Well, that beeping's harmless. So we don't need to mess with that, per se. But what we do need to do is draw in what we want to figure out. And we know 12 is going to the spiders. So the only area we really have left over here is past number four. So let's 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 roll a couple things here. Actually, to be honest, I kind of like what I had going on over here. So let's look at this, look at this weirdness that we have. This is from uh <clears throat> from Total Party Kill. So again, guys, uh if you go to the very first. So I don't think I'm going to put them every single one, but if you go to the very first in this series, I have a list of all these links that I will be using here. I will try to remember to put it here, too, but I don't know if I'll be able to. Okay, so let's see. We've got ten. Let's just roll. I'm just going to roll randomly to see if any of these feel. They're all weird, and I'm going to use them to base this next section off of. Well, unless it's the giant's belly button. If somebody has an idea for the giant's belly button, let me know. Okay, ten-sided die. Here we go. Five. Weeping child and cockroach demon. Oh, interesting. And then we have a witch song, Secrets for News. I'm still going to use that somewhere. I still like that one. But, you know what? Again, once again, we're going to use this as our... as our uh, inspiration. So, I don't think there should actually be a child here, because that's just weird, because how would a child get in here? And if they, if a party finds a child in here, they're going to be incredibly suspicious. So, unless it's some kind of a monster, which it could be, um... I don't think that's going to work. I tend to... So I've talked about this before in videos. <laughs> I try to balance out my, like, NPCs where there's only... Uh, actually, a relatively small amount of them that are just kind of, like, trying to murder you. Because I think that a mistake that, that a lot of gyms make is that every NPC is just like, Oh my god, that's a trick! And then nobody ever trusts the NPCs. So I don't want to right away potentially within the first, you know, session, let's say, running in this dungeon, have them run into this child that is then some kind of a a bad guy, right? So if I'm going to put a weeping, an actual weeping child here, then it needs to actually be a weeping child with a reason. Um, 
So we could either make it so that this cockroach demon has... Uh, okay, so let, let's think of reasons why there'd be a child here. Let's make some notes. Okay, reasons for, for, for weeping children in, in our typical kind of fantasy tropey stuff. So there's a cockroach demon, right? Which means that they have been left as a sacrifice, right? That's that's the that's the obvious one, right? Maybe more interesting, their parent has been sacrificed. Okay, so now they are alone, right? They sought sought is that even a word sought if it is it's not how you spell it sought there we go it is a word that's how you spell it. they sought out the demon for a, a favor slash wish okay uh the obvious they are the demon themselves and then we've got um um, a doppelganger, which is always a, I'm not going to put a doppelganger because again, I don't want to do that early on. So these are pretty obvious. Now that's if there's actually a child now, or if the child is a statue that is weeping healing potion, poison, A strong drug, um, blood. Okay, so we can do stuff like that, right? So this, we have a lot of options here. The, you, when, whenever you're looking at something like this, you have to think, okay, now what's going to be appropriate for what we have going on here? So just thinking about the stuff that we have going on in this particular dungeon, we've got uh, mirrors with uh, with teleportation going on. We have what is a uh, an arena. Right, we've got an air a, a, a repository of knowledge with the skulls. We have a repository of knowledge with the um, with the well. We've got um, what's in room number five? Oh, uh, oh, pendulum trap, appropriate treasure. Okay, so five we need to work on. That's actually kind of a uh, kind of crappy. Um, oh, we have the the maiden. So, I feel like, so that we, by looking at that, we can then look at this. Now, I like the idea, actually. So, I think the more obvious ones is that they've been left, right? So, then this could create a situation where if the PCs, well, you know, it's a moral question, right? If they rescue the, the little girl, then, number one, whatever reason, maybe the demon, there might be a reason why they're sacrificing people, which, you know, is unfortunate, but it is that type of, you know, if it's that kind of world, Right. Then maybe the demon is going to come and destroy the city if they if they rescue the child, right? Or maybe the city, maybe nothing will happen except for that the city will get mad that they rescued the child and try to kill the PCs, making them basically unable to operate out of that town very effectively, uh, which could also throw a lot of wrenches in their thing. Um, so that's one option that I think I want to remove because I think that that is going to create an entirely separate game that I don't want to necessarily involve myself in in this particular dungeon. It's a good idea, but I think it's not going to be working for this. Okay. Uh, they are the demon. I'm not loving that unless in the end the they're not e an evil demon, if that makes sense. In other words, they just want something. And once the party gets it for them, they basically they, they jet. Like, I, I don't want it to be that, like, all of a sudden they're in a combat and the demon jumps out and it's like, oh, I'm a demon. I wouldn't use that. So, for me, you know, and also the whole the things aren't what they seem is not necessarily something I want to throw in there right away. So, I think I'll kill that for now. Um, the reason why I skipped the first two is because they're very similar. So, or it's just a statue, which is a little bit easier to palette in a lot of ways because now we've got... Um, this statue of this weeping child and a cockroach demon and the statue is weeping whatever it's weeping potions or poison and I think I'd make it random depending on who drinks it um, and this could then be something they could use the skulls to find out about 
Maybe there's some more information here. If you want to world build, this could be a really good one. Uh, looking, the parents having been sacrificed or seeking out the demon for a favor wish is good because it involves the party in a way that they can't immediately get themselves in trouble like they can with just saving the girl, right? If the parents are sacrificed, they're probably already gone. Or there's another level of the dungeon that they can try to find them in later, right? So it goes beyond the uh, the the situation there. If if the child sought out the demon for a favor or a wish, that could be super interesting too because what is that favor or wish? What happened that we might want to send the party on another adventure to? So any of these could actually be pretty good hooks. Um, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to skip on the parents, though. Let's skip that, and let's go with... I'm going to start building up that the, the the child sought it up, because I think that's not very well expected. Most parties aren't going to think, oh, uh, party. So, let's see. So we need to do the, the some classic tropey stuff here, right? Um... So what does she want from the demon? Uh, typically, what does a child want? You know, they, they if you think about any fairy tale type stuff, whatever, generally children that are wanting a wish or something, it's because they're abandoned um, on some level. So um, <clears throat> perhaps she has been abandoned or, or um, something happened to somebody she loves. So she's going to, you know, she's going to this demon to ask the favor. Or perhaps she's been slighted and she wants revenge. Maybe that's a better twist, right? So it says child, so you could go any way you want. Let's let's make her a little bit older so that we can maybe do the revenge thing. Let's make her like 12. And uh, you see how I automatically made it a female? Because I feel like in fairy tale type stuff, it's almost always a little girl. But you know what? Maybe we should do a boy. All right, so he's kneeling in front of a statue of a terrible demon-like cockroach. Um, streams of cockroaches cover the walls and floor and some crawl upon the boy as he weeps. Bam. Okay. Okay. Good. Now. So let's go classic. I like a classic thing and I'd like to, to run with more heroic PCs. So I'm going to say, um, the boy will tell a story about how his father was killed by a noble house after he was caught stealing. This is classic. We will change this, but uh, stealing food. Okay. Um, the boy was then brought to a temple to be raised by, by monks, comma, uh, he found a, an ancient tome that spoke of this demon which can be summoned forth to reek reek that yeah, reek is it no reek reek revenge um the demon he says the the demon spoke to him and wants a blood the sacrifice, comma, the boy is crying because he cannot bring himself to kill a person, 
even though he seeks revenge. Okay, so now we have a little backstory, right? This this kid is is here. He snuck in, right? Um, how long ago this happened? Whatever we could figure that out. I mean, that, we don't. I think this is enough, right, to let the DM run with it. And the pieces have a lot of options here. You know, they can convince him that's not a good idea. They could go kill the noble. They could uh, help him with the blood sacrifice. I mean, there's lots of things they could do. Um, return him to the monks for some kind of reward. So there's lots of other storylines that could happen here. But it's vague enough to leave it open. So I didn't want to... I think this is good. This is a good place to leave it. Um, all right, so now... Now we know what's going to be back here. So now, whatever we put in the way has to be something that a 12-year-old boy could have got past, which is probably a lot. I, remember. I think 12-year-old Daniel could have got past a lot more than today's Daniel. All right, so let's draw this map out a bit. Um, I'm going to switch to the black so it's easier for you guys to see it. Okay, so we have that trap there, which obviously you could have crawled past, and it's usually empty, so that's not really an issue. Um, let's put the room... Well, let's just drop this out a little bit. We want, this, that's not going to be the only thing in here, but I figure this will be a good... And again, remember the, the thing, we want to make the hallways long enough that once they crawl out of the pit trap, it goes further than their vision, so somebody will have to go ahead just to, uh, to check, or, you know, or else... Uh, they can go as party, obviously, but they'll have to use a lantern. So once we get past this point, we'll add, uh, let's see, let's add a little, you know what I'm do? I'm going to add my little drawing assist here so I can have straighter lines. That's not how you do it. Get a drawing guide, boop. see here let's do it a little bit so right here i'm at 650 feet so i'm gonna go at least 60 so i'll go 70 just to be safe nice uh let's see we'll put a branch this way and i'll put a, branch, a little short branch up here that will cut back like this because remember the other thing is we want to set them up so that they have to explore a little bit because the longer they're in the dungeon, the more likely they are to run into any of our random stuff. So again, corners like this are going to make them stop. And they're going to want to try to figure out what's going on. And, you know, maybe they'll do little explorations. Let's put a niche here. And a small kind of room here. It's actually shaped, we'll, we'll make it shaped like a, a kind of a weird shape. We'll make that a room. And that will have a door on it. Okay. And then over here, we'll let this keep going a bit. Then that it'll turn. And there'll be a room here. Right? One thing that's um, interesting is that in the, the example of play in the basic uh, book, Based on kind of how they describe it, it seems like they go from a secret door in one room to another room that can only be accessed through secret doors. So I think I'm going to make a room like that. I want to make another room over here. Right? And then I'm going to put a hallway here. Coming down. And I say only because obviously we didn't see the whole map, so there could be other ways that connect to it, but... So again, a lot of this is going to be what you might consider empty space because we want them to have time to kind of move around. We can put some dungeon dressing in these rooms if we want. But for the most part, they're going to just be, you know, just kind of areas of the dungeon that certain things occur. Now what I'm thinking is this area over here, actually that's okay. Now that I just did that. We're going to look for one more thing besides this demon thing because, because I don't want to hide that because I, because I decided I was going to make it more public. So 
I just drew a separate section over here, so we'll have something over there. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like you saying that, but I think it's important to note that I'm not filling in every room here on purpose. Remember that a dungeon should be mostly, in an old school sense, should be mostly empty. Because if it was, if every room was filled, especially with different types of monsters, then they would just be smashing into each other all the time. That's where you get those things where people talk about, oh, the dungeons don't make sense because all the monsters are on top of each other. Well, not if you do it right, you know? I mean, I'm going to say that this leads off so I can kind of cross over there a little bit if I want. What we want to do is have empty space, right? Each of these, if we remember that first dungeon that I showed you, the original dungeon that Gygax shows in, in, the, in the book, the uh, men, I think it's in uh, Wilderness Adventures, um, he basically has the whole thing broken up and he has all these little like sections and that's kind of what we're going to do here so now we've got two parts of this thing um we're going to put that demon stat the cockroach demon statue thing um <clears throat> actually i'm gonna have to redraw this because it, it would make sense for that to be at the end of something right uh, oh you know what i'm gonna do i'm actually gonna add okay so that's actually that's going to be in this room down here here, so let me see what number that should be. All right, that's gonna be 14. So let me take off my drawing guard guide so I can write. Oh, once again, I drew stuff that you guys couldn't see. Sorry about that, I'll show you in a second. Gotta keep remembering, I'm just gonna put it up there. Okay, so I just drew this part down here at the bottom. I'm going to, uh, this room right here is going to be area 14, which is gonna have the, uh, the demon statue. And I'm going to go, I'm going to put a 14A here. And this is going to be just a collapsed area. So there was another tunnel heading there at one point. So that's not just the end, right? Um, so that's that. Though I do feel like this is a bit of wandering to get them here. Again, wandering monsters. They're going to come in. They're going to find things. And remember, some of our wandering monster stuff is traps. So we're going to be adding stuff as we go. So that's why this seems a little bit uh, loose. So I am going to put, oh, what did I do there? I did some kind of weird room that's not connected to anything. Get my, uh, my eraser out here. Because maybe that's, the, that's the, you know, the fates telling me that something should be there. So let me, let me put a, uh, let me put a secret room here. Okay, good. So since I put a secret room there, we're gonna have to put something in that secret room. So I'll put a 15 there. And then back here, we're gonna put something in this area here. I think, I think I'm think i actually gonna put it in here. Uh, this whole area on the side here is gonna be um, 16. And Right, there's going to be a secret door that goes from here to here, and a secret door that goes from here to here. So the only way into 16 is through secret doors, but actually also the only way into this bottom space down here, is, is uh, which is beyond 16, is also through secret doors. And that space, I think we're going to leave basically empty for now. Um, again, it's one of those things where we want... You'll have to temper it, obviously, with your party and your players, but we want a little bit of empty space, so... Um, We, uh, I think for now I'm going to leave that empty. Okay. Or whatever's in 16 maybe goes into that area as well. We'll, we'll figure out 16 in a second. So let's just do the other ones first. So let's cut back to here. All right, so we're going to do, okay, so this area here, 14 to 14A. This is area 14. Area 14A is going to be collapsed passage use for future adventures. Yeah, there we go. I mean, if if somehow you have a group that makes their way all the way through this dungeon to that spot, 
and right at the very beginning without doing much else and then all of a sudden decides they're going to spend time just digging that out i mean more power to them i guess but i feel like that's the kind of thing people come back to and you know later on you can you have hints as to that there's more stuff there you find somebody finds a map somewhere in another dungeon that shows more rooms to this one than people that come back or it's on a different level maybe there's a hole in the ceiling on the second level that leads up to something that's beyond 14a so we can add to this as we go um, all right so 15 is still in that same cockroach area and since the child has nothing with them i think 15 is going to actually be some kind of a treasure area it's going to require finding a secret door to go into so let's let's give let's give a, a trap with with treasure in 15 so let me roll my percentiles again and see what, see if we can come up with anything interesting 71. Okay. You cannot kill it with magic. It's written down. Let me take the other one because that maybe I'll use that plus something else. 43. A blackthorn tree is pierced by seven swords. Oh, that's interesting. There's also the below that a silver ring lies surrounded by dead warriors. That's a fun one. I like the tree, though. Well, there's blackthorn tree, an actual kind of tree. Yeah, look at this. Oh, wow, cool. Okay, nice. All right, well. The blackthorn tree is pierced by seven swords. The stones on the floor are pierced by a tree, a blackthorn tree bearing no leaves, not bearing, uh, Black on a tree. Uh, no, actually, it's weirder if it's if it's growing trees, right? As soon as the floor appears to buy a black item, it's using pierced twice. Okay. Strangely, huh, do I even see that? In the darkness of this room grows a blackthorn tree. There are seven swords piercing should they be yeah that's how it says right i probably should have copied it oh i did copy it all right okay now no i can't say it there are seven swords i guess i can't say it like that swords piercing Tree. So the way I was writing it, this was right. It's in the tree. Period. Okay. One party member or more if they pull them at the same time. A pull, a sword, which is as follows. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, after the sword have been pulled, the tree and remaining swords crumble to dust. This tree returns one year and one day 
later. Okay. Again, describing why nobody's found this thing and pulled the sword. All right, so we need seven swords. Well, I mean, clearly, um, well, of course, you know, how are you going to roll seven? But uh, we'll have a d7. Don't, don't figure it out. Uh, actually, there's a way to do seven. If you do... Um, No, you can't do that. Well, I mean, I'm just going to say roll a d8. The easiest way to do it is to roll a d8. A d8 on the roll of 8, comma, roll twice and combine or take the best. There we go. All right, so we got seven swords, right? So, cursed, of course. Uh, this would just be a normal sword. Uh, sheds light. If you guys have ideas for swords, let me know. I'll put them in here. Um, let's see. This should be roll a random magic sword. No cursed. I mean, I'm going to want four of these to be normal swords, because basically the chance of... Well, I mean, they define special room. How about we would do two normal swords? Actually, we're going to do it this way. I'm going to take two swords that shed light. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. Ooh. Normal sword that... Sheds light. Continual light spells cast on it. I mean, that's a super useful item, so I'm going to actually give two of those. And then I'm going to give two that are the, the opposite. Sheds darkness. I feel like pulling just, I mean, you've got to have some pretty good cojones to, uh, as I say, to pull a sword out of this tree. So I want to give them something no matter what. Um, so I'm going to go normal sword sheds darkness, normal sword sheds light, normal sword sheds dark. Okay, so cursed, and then I'll give two options for magic swords. You know, again, I know that some people might be like, oh, giving out so much magic items. But if you think it's too much magic for your campaign, then of course change it. Um. Actually, one of them will be roll magic sword, no curse. The other one will be roll random magic sword. That's the best way to do it. So there's an automatic curse sword. There's an automatic not curse sword. There's a sword that could be one or the other. And then the other sword is either shedding with darkness or light. Which I think is pretty cool. Okay. And they can only pull one sword. So it's not going to break a campaign to have swords. Okay. That's in 15. Now in 16 which is this hidden room, and then another room behind it. Uh, let's do one more. Let's roll again. Ninety-two. Spear trap. Let's see if we have a crappy. Ah, okay, hold on. No secret door here in Goblin Ruins. We're definitely using that. Oh, you know what? Okay. Oh, hold on. A stone monolith is marked with the rune of fire. I like that. So let's do this. So I'm going to... Okay. Sorry, my brain's working really quickly here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this area here, this area 16... And I'm actually going to put, um, this is going to be 16A, and then I'm going to go 16B and 16C. I want this area to be a look a little bit kind of an arcane weirdness area. 16A, I just love this, uh, um, this goblin, uh, 
You know, because it's literally it's in a in a secret room. Gotta have some fun sometimes with the. Oh no, that's not the one I want. I want that. I want that one actually to be in sixteen B, which we're gonna deal with in a second. Um. So. Above. Secret door in Goblin. No secret door here. I just think that's funny. And of course, obviously, that's a secret door. Uh, stone monolith with a rune of fire. And 16C. I'm going to do a rune of ice. Um, can be inscribed in a scroll to create a wall of fire spell, but when cast, there is a one in six chance the caster instead is engulfed in flame for 2d6 damage unless they are of a high enough level to cast wall of fire. So basically, if you're a low-level magic user, like you might be on the first level and you do this, you can make a wall of fire spell, but it's risky. Um, and of course, you're not going to know that until you try it. Actually, this is a chance is probably too too low. Um, so I'm actually going to make this higher. I'm going to say it's a three and six chance. I mean, that's a pretty powerful spell to give somebody, uh, but it's pretty much instant death. That they It's like a 50-50 chance they cast a spell or die. Uh, nah, that seems unfair to you. I'll say two and six. That's... 33% chance. So you have a 70% chance of being able to cast a wall of fire spell if you if you inscribe this, but you have a 30% chance of killing yourself. Uh, this one is going to be marked with the Ruin of Ice, and remember too that they can come back here when they are higher level. This is one thing we want to remember about Mega Dungeons, right? Is that they will be... An ideal situation is they are useful through different levels. Like you can be engulfed nice, right? Actually, in this in this case, I'm going to do a little different. It's engulfed in, in ice, and unless broken free in two to five rounds, will suffocate. There we go. And then we can leave that up to the magic user. To the, uh... And remember, if they're casting the spell, it's probably in some kind of combat, right? Um, so if they bust into this this area 16 here, they're basically, it's like a, a very, again, we're, we're working on some of these same themes, right? This is a knowledge area. It's risky, but it's a knowledge area. Uh, if they come down into uh, 14, you've got this demon idol that you can deal with, and it adds an entire different spin to the thing. Um and I think that should get us here. Let's take a quick look at this. Let me block myself out here. Um, all right, looking at our map quickly. <laughs> I would say quickly, because I think we've gone. Yeah, this one's been a bit longer. Um, looking at our map, I'd say we're done. I'm going to... Yep. Good, good, good. There we go. All right, guys, so hopefully I'm going to transcribe this into an SPDF so it's easy to look at. Um, let me know. Again, there's areas here where I asked for some feedback, so give me feedback here because we will always we can update the PDF. I'll try to get first volume of it out, though, so that this first level is out there and we can have some people actually start to uh, play test and mess around with it. Mm, I do understand that like there's a lot of ways to get to second level. If from here, we probably won't have the second level dungeon done right away, so, uh, you know, if that's the case, start my work on your own second levels, and uh, we will eventually get to it. Uh, probably next time I'm going to work on the, uh, 
the humanoid section and the spiders, probably one each time, because I feel like I don't want these to, to be so long. And uh, we'll go from there. If you haven't already, guys, go ahead. Some, oh, I almost forgot. If you made it almost that far and you're about to click off the video. Uh, by the way, if you watch the uh, actual play videos, I'm moving those to another channel so we can keep this channel consolidated with just the type of, this type of video. So I'll put the link in the description. So go ahead and follow that channel too. Please subscribe over there um, so you'll know when the live plays go there. Should be about May 1st. We're going to move all the live plays over there. So if you are watching those or if you have any interest in watching them ever, please subscribe to that channel. <laughs> if you do that and you haven't subscribed to this one yet, then subscribe to this one too. Uh, and I'll see you next time.